When you have a comprehensive practice like Tulsa Spine and Rehab, you get a myriad of questions, and such is the case for Dr. Sean Riley and the team. Dr. Riley, one of those questions is when someone has been told that the length of their legs differ. I would imagine they're a bit concerned when asking that question. How big of a problem is that? Sure. It's a question I get quite often, Scott. You know, you know, patients will say, I went to a chiropractor, I saw this physical therapist, and they say that one of my legs is shorter um, than the other. And they kind of look at me like deer in headlights, like, how in the heck did that happen? Um, there's two different types of you know, leg length inequality or a leg length deficiency. And the first is going to be anatomical. Okay. It, it has a few other names, but we're going to call it anatomical. And that actually means that it's likely the the leg is shorter. I mean, it could be related to birth. You know, we'll call that congenital, something that you were born with, where there might be one leg is actually just, you know, measurably shorter than the other. In some, you know, rare instances with trauma, you know, we've had patients that have had broken fibulas or um, tibias in the lower leg or the femur in the upper leg, which actually with, you know, with surgery and with the repair, it can shorten that extremity as well. So the first is going to be anatomical where actually that leg is just actually, you know, just shorter. The second one is more of a functional discrepancy where it's typically going to be related to posture. Your pelvis might have shifted a little bit, you know, with daily activities, things have started to tighten and so forth. So, you know, that's managed a little bit um, easier than the anatomical. Um, so what happens with leg length inequality or a discrepancy? So you can imagine, Scott, if you were walking around, okay, all day long and you had one shoe on and one shoe off, just the difference there, what it could potentially do, okay? And so in our practice, one of the most common types of uh, problems that we see is going to be low back pain and hip pain. Now, I don't want to rule out knee and ankle because those are things that can, you know, be affected as well. But we're going to see a lot of patients that come in with low back pain and hip pain. So in my assessment uh, of low back pain, and we've talked about comprehensive exams and so forth in the past, I want to determine maybe if that leg length um, is, is a contributing factor, if there's a little bit of a discrepancy and, you know, how we are going to address that. So we want to start from the ground up. So related to the, you know, the low back pain um, secondary to a leg link discrepancy, you know, we're going to use manipulation, massage, physical therapy to address the low back pain itself. Now for the leg link discrepancy, we're going to rec likely recommend a heel lift. And it's just simply an insert that you're going to stick in your heel that or the heel of your shoe. And it's going to bring, you know, we're going to level you out and get you to a more neutral position. So research has shown that as little as five millimeters, which is not much, it's like three sixteenths of an inch difference can contribute to low back pain. And so what we'll do is we'll figure out how much a patient is off and we want to start to level them off, level them out, pardon me. And what we want to do, this is in a, you know, kind of a gradual fashion. If they have a, a quarter of an inch, we're not just going to take them to a quarter because, you know, their body's gotten used to this discrepancy over time. So we'll maybe start with an eighth and build them up to that quarter gradually. So th something like an insert, is that a permanent solution? Something that they'll, they'll always have to use? Well, possibly. I mean, with an anatomical leg, you know, the one that is just um, just going to be shorter. Uh, yes. And it's it's a very conservative, simple fix. You know, it's just, you know, the ones that we get are very inexpensive and patients can put it in a dress shoe to their their uh, their sneakers or their workout shoes or whatever they may be. Now, the functional, you know, with rehab, physical therapy, chiropractic, different types of things to try to get things loosened up, get things leveled out throughout that pelvic region. In those cases, sometimes the, the heel lift may be um, unnecessary or even obsolete. So in a case where it's a functional cause, is it a situation that can get worse over time? Well, I, I would say so. But typically, you know, I would say the majority of the population, Scott, has a, a functional leg link discrepancy secondary to posture, you know, what they do for a living, um, you know, what they don't do in the gym or activity wise, it, footwear could contribute to it. You know, a lot of women that wear high heels and so forth, a lot of the compensation may come from the pelvis and, you know, contribute to a leg link discrepancy. Um, it's one of those things that it, it's another contributing factor to something else. So it's likely going to lead to low back pain or hip pain along with maybe core instability. So it's more of just that comprehensive, you know, kind of piece of the puzzle that we're looking at when we evaluate a patient for low back pain or hip pain to see if that's one thing that one of those um, factors that we can limit and take out of the equation. 
And we've talked about the impact when you're you're walking, that sort of thing. But if you're a runner, it's probably even worse, I would imagine. Oh, it's huge. And there's, you know, you can Google running and heel lifts and um, leg length discrepancy. There's all kinds of research and new science that is coming out that, you know, how much stress how much compensation goes on throughout your ankle, knees, and hips, and low backs. So definitely something for those runners out there you want to look into. If you've got a question about an ache or pain or something just doesn't seem right, you need to contact the team at Tulsa Spine and Rehab. Give them a call, 918-743-3737. 